Welcome back to the Glow Up Girl Podcast. I'm Kyra. Thank you all for joining. All right. Uh, let's uh, welcome Leslie into the podcast. Welcome, Leslie. Kyra, thank you so much for having me on. This is going to be so much fun. <laughs> yes. All right. So let's go ahead and dive in. We're going to start out by having you tell the audience listening or watching out there who you are and what you do. Well, um, thank you. So I am a Pilates instructor. I'm second generation, which doesn't mean my mom taught. It means my teacher was taught by Joseph Pilates. So very interesting <laughs> industry and weird way to say um, what your lineage is as far as who trained you. Um, and I have been doing this for 15 years now. Um, and one of the other things I do with it is I actually help other Pilates instructors grow their business because as a young instructor, I actually grew mine really easily in 2008 when other people are having problems. And I saw some of my favorite best instructors not doing the same thing and I wanted to help them. And so here we are um, 15 years after starting teaching and I have an on-demand platform for people to do Pilates. And then um, I coach instructors on how to grow their business. Awesome. Well, first of all, I just want to commend you because I love when people are pouring in to other people. I mean, like just the fact that you want to help someone else grow their business is so important because, I mean, it just shows that, you know, there is room for all of us. Everybody can win. Yeah, it's true. And also, like, I never thought that that'd be something I'm doing. I just saw it really hurt me to see how many people wanted to teach and they were struggling to make a living. And I hated hearing the, there's no money in Pilates. There's no money in Pilates. And I'm like, but then on the other hand, people are saying Pilates is so expensive. So how can it be expensive and no money in it? I'm not really <laughs> sure how those two things work out. Thank and you. so I I had to figure that out. And then it just became something I wanted to help people with because it meant more people would get the experience I felt. And like I fell in love with how Pilates changed my body. Um, and I don't mean that in a, an, an aesthetic way. I mean like in an internal mind-body connection way. Mm -hmm. And I wanted other people to feel that. So it was kind of selfish and that I knew I couldn't teach everybody. <laughs> And I wanted everyone to feel the way I was feeling. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think that's I think that's great. Let me ask you a question as far as you getting into more of um a sort of like being a coach essentially to these business owners. Um, so when you decided and you said, you know, I think I want to do this, because a lot of people out there, we have a lot of people who are listening and watching who are coaches who might want to be coaches. Um, what did you do? Like, how did you get started? Yeah, I think it's really great because also I will say when I when that happened, when I started coaching people, I had a corporate Pilates gig, which you wouldn't think exists, but it does. I worked mm -hmm. for a high end fitness company and I was inside their their gym teaching people Pilates. And so I was doing this sort of business coaching on the side. And so how I got started was I actually started with where the people knew and trusted me. So I actually started teaching workshops on how to get first-time clients to buy a package within the company I worked for. So you guys can, if you work for a company, don't think that like, oh, I got to leave this company. I actually grew within the company and I was being sent around to different studios and different gyms and doing different calls for the actual company I worked for, which allowed me to get, first of all, work on the presentation <laughs> on the job, <laughs> but then also those people who came to that workshop worked for other studios and they told their studio owners who then hired me. And I, you guys, you could have hired me for a hundred bucks back then. Like I was like, oh, oh you want to hire me? Like, <laughs> so I really just started with, uh, with a workshop, not one to one, just like these mini workshops on one topic. And I just kept presenting the same topic over and over again. And I think that's really key because a lot of people want to have 17 different products because they see all these different mm -hmm. huge coaches, Mel Robbins, you know, Tony Robbins, uh, Lewis mm -hmm. Howes, and they have all these products. And the reality is, is if you can get known for one thing, then you can have those other products. And so I got known for helping people convert first-time clients. And then from there, um, I started teaching um, on how to actually set your rates and raise your rates because mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't know how to pick rates for that. So it, it, it kept going from there. But the first thing was workshops. And then from those workshops, I had people go, hey, I have this problem. Can you help me with this problem? And mm -hmm. then I started doing one-on-one -on -one offerings. From that, it really was having, I was having a hard time with time management because Pilates is a service-based business where I mm -hmm. teach for a set period of time. So coaching, also same thing. And so I actually had to figure out a way to reach more people in the same amount or less time. And that's where um, I started, I wrote my book and then I started a coaching group where people could come in and that allowed mm -hmm. me to help more people at a 
price point that they could afford and also would was it time for money for me. So that's kind of how I got mm-hmm. started to where I am now. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, because it's like you sort of went through all different phases, right? Within and you tried different things, which is what I always tell people. I'm like, don't be afraid to try different things and pivot where you need to pivot. Um, but I love the idea that you started inside of the business that you were in because I think a lot of people do often feel like if you aspire to be like an entrepreneur or to be on your own, that it means that you can't get clients in the corporate space. And I've heard a lot of people who say, oh, no, I actually started getting clients within, you know, like other like customers or, you know, uh, other clients that we had. And that's why I got my start. And then I just took a small project. And then a lot of times too, because I'm like, a lot of times too, like if you're in the corporate space, like just say if you're like a, I don't know, like you're a consultant, like a marketing person or a sales consultant, business, whatever. I mean, sometimes if you want to leave, I mean, there might be opportunities inside of the business. If you say, well, actually, I'm going to step away and do my own thing. And I'm like, well, yeah, you're cutting down on like their insurance fees and some of those more administrative fees. And they're just paying you like, you know, paying you direct for a, on a project basis. Yeah. And also like, um, you know, you can't, uh, not every corporate corporation is going to create new jobs for you. But like, yeah, probably if I had wanted to, I probably could be like, here's a job I want to have for you guys. Here's how it's going to make you money. Here's how it's going to affect things. And like, this is how I want to do it. Having had the proof of the one workshop I was doing. So like, mm-hmm. I probably could have um, if if that was my goal. But I do think we're so quick to, I got to go work for myself. And like, not everyone's cut out to work for themselves. Mm-hmm. Health insurance is a real thing in this country. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> yeah. I, sometimes I miss it. <laughs> but like, um, but I also... I think it's so easy to cut our nose despite our face and go, well, actually, like the people in that company trusted me and they saw the work that I did. So I didn't have to sell Mm -hmm. them on the workshop because they saw how good I was at the thing I wanted to teach on. Mm -hmm. Whereas it was actually harder for me to sell it to uh, outside places because they didn't know me. They they, they were scared of like what that would do to their business. And so I had to build trust up somewhere. And it's easier to build trust where you like from a place where you already have it mm-hmm. and get known and get those testimonials and and get that. So um, I, I highly recommend like try it where you're at. And also it's less risky. I was able to test and see if I liked the idea. I think too often people are like, I have to get my lead magnet together and I have to get my, mm-hmm. my coaching service is going to be, I have to have a group and I have to have a small and I have a one-on-one. Mm-hmm. Just, just try it out because you actually might not like what you created. And if you spent all this time and money, you're like stuck with this funnel you made. And mm-hmm. I was able to kind of like test the waters out for several years before I had to make mm-hmm. it organized. Yes, I love. Thank you. Thank you. Because test, I love a good test and learn moment. It's like just test it, see if it works. Because like you said, I mean, a lot of effort and time goes into planning. And if, you know, you may not want to do group coaching or you may not want to do one-on-one, you may only love doing group coaching. So it's like, just try one thing. And it goes back to what you said earlier. It's like when we try to have so many products, so many offerings, like let's just, let's start with something basic of what you know your target customer is in need of. Like start there. And then try that. And then, of course, that if it grows and you're like, oh, I can I have the capacity to do more to take on something else. But I think, yeah, we do just sort of live in this space now where it feels like you have to have a lot of things like you guys just throw a lot of stuff at people all the time. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I know. And, and like um, and, and, and you because they're looking at other people's sites and they're like, OK, I've got to have this. St- and I just yes, you can use that as market research. Mm-hmm. It can be really informative, but you don't know if they're profitable. You don't even know if they're happy. So like you really have to figure out what right. makes you happy first because mm-hmm. you, especially when you work for yourself, there are not, not every day is shiny and unicorn. Uh, before we hit record, I was like, it's Friday. Yes, I work for myself. It, I <laughs> like I could take a day off anytime I want if I really wanted to. Like I could just make it happen. But like there are going to be days where they just feel like work. You know, and so you have to love what you do so that you on those days you can get through it. Otherwise, you're going to create something that's not authentic to you and out of integrity. And then you're going to feel stuck doing it. Yes, yes, yes. Leslie's dropping the nuggets, (laughs) y'all. All All right. So let's talk about let's talk Pilates. Yeah. So um, how do people, okay, because a lot of people, of course, right, Pilates was like the thing. Everybody was going to be doing Pilates. But 
how do people know, like if it's the right workout for them? Yeah, I love this question. So Pilates also at like every other year has its moment where it's getting trendy. And like, you know, at the time we're recording <laughs> this, like uh, Miley Cyrus was just on stage showing off how strong she is. And right. my friend is her teacher. So like I know the workout that she does and uh-huh. I know how long she's been doing it. And I know how many days a week she does it. Um, So like, and I also know that not everyone of us will look like that. <laughs> I don't look <laughs> like that and I teach it. So like, um, so Pilates, how do you know it's right for you? You have to think of Pilates like any other fitness regimen that's out there. There are multiple different styles of weight training. There are multiple different styles of yoga. There are multiple different styles of Pilates. So when you try Pilates out for yourself, first of all, don't just give it one shot. If you hate it, like it might be the teacher or the type of class you went to. So mm-hmm. certain things I like to tell people is it is easy to just Google and pick the place that's going to have like um, a two weeks free or some sort of ridiculous intro rate. And you can, you're most likely going to get some sort of like corporate deal. Um, and that's not to say that the teachers aren't great. There could be some really great teachers there. But mm-hmm. what I highly recommend you do is do a search of all the different people that are in your area and find your, your, the words you're looking for are comprehensively trained or they've been they've done 450 more hours of training. You want those kinds of teachers and here's why. Every single one of us has a different body and a different need and even if you're in a group mm-hmm. class, you want someone who's had a study for 9 months to a year before they can teach you. You don't mm-hmm. want someone who got training the weekend and that happens all the time. There's a because flies is growing so much because Flies and instructors don't grow on trees. A lot of places have tried to figure out shortcuts where someone is just trained on one type of equipment and then they come take that class. The problem is they don't know how to help you if you can't do that exercise yet because they don't have the other tools. So you're looking for someone who's comprehensive and trained. I think that's right for you. Unless you, um, it is for everybody. Joseph Plies was a, was, a, was a man who designed it for men. And that's not to say that it wasn't what it thought about for women, but back in the 1930s, you guys, uh, women weren't allowed to work out. They weren't thinking about working out. Most people didn't work out. Um, and even up until the 70s, they thought if we go in for a run, our like uterus would fall out. So a lot of fitness <laughs> regimens were designed for men. Now, what happened is that there are many dancers went there to be in air quotes fixed. And after his death, the dancers are what took his work out into the world. And so the reason why there's this in it's not the best image. People go, oh, I want the Pilates body. And I think like when you look at some of these celebrities, they would have mm-hmm. that Pilates body. You have to understand mm-hmm. that dancers have a type of body back then and dancers were doing Pilates. So that doesn't mean everyone's going to walk out of a Pilates studio looking like that. Mm-hmm. Genetics, hormones, nutrition, you know, diet are actually proven to be how your body is. But genetics and hormones and then nutrition. So you have to really understand that like depending on those things, Pilates is going to enhance that. And Pilates is for you because it is meant for every single person to have a strength-based workout. What I love about it is that it balances your imbalances, it strengthens what's weak, it tightens what's loose, and it's going to work your whole body out in each workout. And for the busy person who's listening, I know everyone who's listening is trying to do something else while they're doing something else. Like, you need to understand, like, you don't have time to do arm day, leg day. You don't have time to be sore. Like, I don't want to be so sore I can't sit on the toilet. I hate that. So what Pilates does is it actually gives you all the benefits of strength training, but also with the benefits of flexibility. And you work your whole body out in each workout. And if you ever feel like you're being spot trained, that's a sign that you're not in a comprehensively trained class and you should find another teacher who's going to make sure your whole body is being worked out at the same time. Hmm. Interesting. I like that. a lot that. of history there. <laughs> it, was all, it was all good, but I have to say that it, you know, the striking thing for me was if you run, your uterus might fall yeah. out. Just saying. Crazy. They thought forever that if women worked out, we we're going to grow hair in our chest and we wouldn't be fertile. It's like just so many things about women's bodies they don't know. So right. it's a little infuriating, but um, but it really is this great workout and you can do it on the mat. Um, mm-hmm. That's where Joe Supplies originally created things. And that's like where I love to help people is just like have the accessibility of the mat. Now, if you have chronic pain or injuries, you might want to start on equipment first and you might want to start mm-hmm. with a private session to make sure that you know what your modifications are before you're in a, in a group class. But a lot of people think you need to have the reformer and everyone's like, oh, I do reformer Pilates. There's no such thing. There's Pilates and there's sometimes there's Pilates on a reformer and sometimes it uses a chair and sometimes it uses a, the mat. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're all part of one umbrella but exercise of called Pilates and so um equipment is there in case you need it and then the mat though is the most accessible way because you just need room on your floor to lay down you don't have mm-hmm. to have these expensive pieces of equipment 
Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you say to people who might be listening or watching and saying, well, is it expensive? Can I afford to go to Pilates? Yeah. I love this question and I think it's really important to chat about it. In every type of workout regimen, you can find a wide range of prices. So anytime mm -hmm. something is one-on-one, -on -one, yes, it's going to be expensive. You're paying for someone's time for that hour. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you are unable to afford private or at least long term, there are always class options with Pilates. And the way I teach Pilates is really to help my clients be independent of me. When you mm -hmm. went to Joe Supply mm -hmm. Studio, you actually took five privates and then you came in on your own. You didn't even schedule. You would just walk in, put the money on the counter and you do your own workout, just like a gym, just like you check out the gym. And mm -hmm. so um, if where you're going or where the places you've looked at are out of your price range, or they require you to always be under what they're doing, then that can be expensive. And I would say look at other places. But there is free, because there's YouTube, I'm on it. And I've got free classes for beginners, you can do that. There's other people, if you don't like me, <laughs> that have free there. So there's free, even on equipment. So I, I even have free equipment classes on there. If you happen to find a performer, you know, at a yard sale, and someone gave it to you, <laughs> like there's free. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the reason why classes for Pilates are any more expensive than your gym or yoga classes is because you can only fit so many pieces of equipment in a room. So Pilates equipment is about $4,500 a reformer, sometimes $3,500. So if you think about it, if you look at a room with 10 reformers, that's 40 something, that's $50,000. So mm -hmm. obviously they have to be the instructor and they're limited. They can only have as many people in that class as piece of equipment. Whereas mm -hmm. in a gym, I can buy a bunch of dumbbells and have 30 people in a room. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. why those places can be more affordable than Pilates. But I would actually say that you're getting more quality and more attention mm -hmm. in a Pilates class because there's fewer people. Uh, it just so happens that that might be more expensive than you can afford. So what I would say is the mat you can do on your own at your home with YouTube. Um, and so there's there's always a range and I would not let money stop you if the place where you're going to is out of your price range. Let's keep searching. Let's keep there's mm -hmm. always going to be someone who's in your price range offering you great quality Pilates. Mm -hmm. OK, I love this. Um, first of all, because you gave us a tiered approach. Um, <laughs> so, so thank you. But also what I think is important is something I always go back to. It's like investing in yourself. And, you know, we can look at the ways. Yes, I know life is lifing and where that life is expensive. It's it's expensive to breathe these days. Yeah. I get it. But I mean, there's breath work now. Right. So you can <laughs> go pay to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But, you know, but with anything that you would spend your money on that you enjoy doing. Um, you know, you're making it, you're choosing to invest in it. And I think it's important to invest in our wellness. Um, you know, uh, I've tried, I will say I've tried Pilates a few times. I think that I've been frightened because <laughs> I won't do it again because I think I've been frightened just because I'm like, oh my gosh, wait, I'm not that flexible anymore. Mm -hmm. And excuse me. And I think, you know, when you were just talking about, it's like, I could stand to like, do that again because they do really light strength like workouts um i like the combination of like really light strength the more than like the cardio stuff because i don't know it's just something about like leaving and you feel like yeah like i did that yeah, I yeah. <laughs> and i think oh go ahead no I, you keep going I'm no, i was just gonna say i just i just think it's um i think it's just important to just remember that um you know your health is, you know, and your wellness is important. And if you want to do this, um, I think Leslie has given us a lot of great options here. So even if you wanted to start like with her and the free classes um, that she provides on YouTube, you can start there. And then maybe it is, maybe it is like building up confidence because I know a lot of times it's like when we don't know how to do something or something doesn't feel right, then we just stop and we don't do it. Oh, that's <laughs> an amazing insight, Kara. And yeah. it's true. Like if you're like, oh my God, I'm going to be embarrassed. So I won't go to the class because I don't want to be the right. one who doesn't know. Hey, you can yeah. go to home until you feel confident. Mm -hmm. um, I think also like to touch on your point on cardio, ladies listening, stop doing the cardio as much as you are. It is not getting you the goals you want. It is not strengthening your bones. And menopause is coming for us all. No one gets to mm -hmm. escape it. And if you are a cardio junkie, it's worse for you. You want to be as strong as possible when you go into menopause. And so you want to do strength-based stuff. 
And then lastly, I want to just want to um, touch on that investing in yourself. You guys, being sick and being in pain costs you money. There are like mm-hmm. tons of studies that show that when you are sick, you do less work. You're less likely to go after what you want to do. You make less money. And it costs a ton to be sick in this country or in any country. It just costs money. Mm-hmm. So when you think about your longevity, and even if you uh, don't think you'll live to 100, everyone's living a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. So it, the longevity we have, I want to be able to get up and down off the ground without help. That mm-hmm. is actually proof that you'll live 20 years longer than someone who needs help. And so mm-hmm. Pilates is something that actually benefits your longevity in your life because it balances those imbalances. So if you felt uncomfortable or like you went to a class and you're just like, this is the weirdest thing I've ever done. Go find another class. Go find a class and you find a teacher that resonates with you. I am not everyone's cup of tea, but I am a lot of people's cup of tea because I'm the for you to be like, let's just laugh at ourselves and make a mistake. Mm-hmm. I fall of exercise all the time. Just try, try again. And um, it is a practice. It's not a perfect. And so you want to find a place where you get to be imperfect. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I like that. A lot of good, lots of good things in there. But one thing that I want to do as, um, you know, as I transition to another topic that you're going to provide us some insight on, it is, yeah. first of all, when you start a routine, right, you want to start a workout. If you are someone who's saying, I'm in, I hear you, Leslie, girl, I'm going to do <laughs> it. That means you need to create a routine, um, also known as a habit, right? <laughs> that you have to keep, you have to keep doing that. And one of the things that I, I would say, and I think that you would say this as well, and I'm going to ask you this question, is that when you decide to put something in front of you that you say, I'm going to do this all the time, I'm going to create a habit, it's going to be a routine. That means, number one, we have to do what prioritize ourselves. That means mm-hmm. you have to become a priority in your everyday or however when you choose to walk this path. So I'm going to ask you first, because as we as women, right, we don't always prioritize ourselves. No. Did you, Leslie, <laughs> did you always prioritize yourself? Um, and then um, if you didn't, how are you doing that today? Yeah. So, no, I did not. I was not born prioritizing myself first and it was not modeled for me to prioritize myself first. And so I say that because if you are someone who struggles with it, I bet you it wasn't modeled for you either. Mm-hmm. And especially because women are supposed to be all the things to all the people mm-hmm. all the time. And don't ever let anyone know it was hard. Do it with a smile yeah. on your face and like your makeup's perfect. And it's not a wrinkle. Um, no, I... I found out the hard way that I didn't prioritize myself first because I was uh, what a doctor told me on the road to being a skinny diabetic um, Mm -hmm. because I wasn't making sure my nutrition was on point. I was not I was not even sometimes eating for hours of the day, like eat wait wait till dinner, you know, and like Mm -hmm. all these things. And so my body started showing signs of neglect and Mm -hmm. started getting really sick. I was having a lot of injuries um, and. I had like a hard wake up call that if I actually wanted to have all the things I wanted to have in this world, I had to have energy and a body that could keep up with me. So how I started that is small. You've got to start small. And so the way habits are built is not by all or nothing, no pain, no gain. It's mm-hmm. about figuring out, okay, who do I want to be? Like, how do I want to be that person? What does that person do? What are some, what is that, what does a day in that life look like? And then going as small as possible. So if I'm someone who wakes up in the morning, and goes for a walk. Mm-hmm. And I've never done that before. You cannot just, you if you, you might do it on day one because motivation is high, but day two and three, it's not going to happen. And mm-hmm. oftentimes <laughs> you're going to go and walk too far and be so sore the next day you can't do it. So it's better to walk around the block. Mm-hmm. And then when that gets easier, you walk around two blocks and then eventually three blocks. But the habit is walk around one block. This one walk mm-hmm. around one block. And if that's too much, <clears throat> excuse me, then the habit is that you're going to put your walking shoes on. Yeah, I mean. And then the most important thing is you have to celebrate what you did do. So there's no room for being a perfectionist and building habits in the life you want and prioritizing yourself. It's actually all about celebrating what you did do or if you thought about doing it. So if you woke up, got ready for work, left the house and you're like, oh my God, I didn't walk around the block. If you shame yourself, you will actually not create a habit. That is the first way to make mm-hmm. sure a habit doesn't stick. And so you go, 
oh, I thought about walking around the block. I'm so good. I'm so amazed at myself. <laughs> and you pat yourself on the back. And then the other thing about habits is this. Putting yourself first in the morning, if that is easy for you, great. I find that to be the best way to do it because when the rest of the day comes on, it becomes harder and harder for me to make time mm-hmm. for myself. But that being said, if that isn't an option, you've got kids, you've got chaos going on, then but like truly, 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 you got to figure out another time that works for you. And maybe the habit of walking is not in the morning. Maybe it's on your lunch break. Like you have to be in experimental mode and mm-hmm. and just keep asking yourself, is this working for me? Is this helping me? Is this getting where I want? And so just because you said you're going to do it doesn't mean you can't change how that was if it's not working for you. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I'm so glad you said that because I think so many times, and I'm, I've been guilty of it too, is that you feel like, oh, because I've made this plan, like, oh, I, I, I have to stick to it. I have to do it this way. And if I do it this way, then it's not real. But it's just what <laughs> we have to be. We have to just be really open to like being able to change, like a pivoting. But I also really like that you said, you know, if you don't walk that day, and you left the house because you had a lot going on, but you thought about it. I think there is something magical in that moment of just even acknowledging that you didn't forget it. Like, because a lot of times that's what happens. People are like, I'm not, because I'm used to working out, because that's usually the thing. I'm mm-hmm. going to work out, I'm going to go, I'm going to be active. And then, like you said, it's like the first day they're like all up and at it and like top of, crack of the dawn the sun hasn't <laughs> risen yet they're working out then day two and and it's like oh no i mean i'm i'm tired i mean i'm so tired from yesterday and then day three it's like i mean i don't know maybe maybe working out maybe working out in the morning is a really different thing for me yeah. i do it i do it when i come home and then it just never gets done at that point <laughs> it's so true and also like i, I had the ble- pleasure of being someone who reminded me that 30 minutes is 2% of your day. 2%, 30 Mm -hmm. minutes. So if you can't dedicate 30 minutes, it doesn't mean you dedicate it all at once, but 30 minutes to throughout your day to you, we got a problem Mm -hmm. because it's only 2%. So there's like so many other things. Like it's, it's, uh, it was also interesting to me about prioritizing yourself is that whenever I talk about how to do it, it is the thing people tune out on. Even though they know they need to, they don't want to hear it because they don't mm-hmm. want to face the facts that they're not doing it. Yeah. But y'all, people that you aspire, the people who are like doing the thing that you wish you were doing, I bet you the ones that are the top of the top of the industry you want to be in, they all have a self-care routine. They mm-hmm. all do. Mm-hmm. Um, RBG, right? When I heard that she had a trainer and she worked with this trainer for an hour every single day, like I was like, yeah, the Supreme Court justice who's making sure that some of our rights are taken care of she mm-hmm. she is literally got the weight of the country on her shoulders for loss and she is going to the gym so like come on you know yeah. you gotta make time for yourself <laughs> yeah you can do it you can do it so but how would you i mean what would you say to somebody because there might be a woman listening right now and is hearing this and saying i hear you leslie i mean i really want to but you know, how do I do like what do I do? How do I because I think a lot of times, right? Uh sometimes when 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 women, like you said, we've been sort of trained or we've grown up with this like everybody else comes before us and we have to do all things for all people. And then there's a level of like guilt that is attached to when we mm-hmm. choose to prioritize ourselves. So yeah. what do you what are your thoughts on that? And also worse, the friends around you might even make you feel shame. Right? There's like wellness shaming that's real. It happens in the workplace. It happens mm-hmm. with your family. Like I've had family members like we're traveling and I'm like, oh, I'm going to go for a run. They're like, oh, yeah, it's so good of you that you get to run every day while we're all hanging out here. You know, like they just like little slide past yeah. things. Like you're supposed to yeah. just sit on the couch with them and all the time because they never see you. So here's the thing I would say to you. The fact that you're even considering taking time for yourself is a really great thing. Mm-hmm. And if you are being hard on yourself because you still haven't figured that out yet, that's not going to land you anywhere because the way the brain works, the brain actually only wants to feel good. And so when you feel shame and judgment and stress, it notices what that topic is and it will avoid that topic. Mm-hmm. So the mm-hmm. fact that you are thinking about prioritizing yourself, you've got to make that a happy celebratory thing so that your brain hears taking care of you is a good thing. Okay, mm-hmm. That is going to help you create habits. The next thing is, you got to do what you have. So if, because I think it can be, it can sound very privileged when it comes to take care of yourself, like make sure you work out an hour a day and like do all these things, meditate. Like if you 
are struggling paying your bills, you know, taking care of the people around you, that that an hour is too much and so it sound really hard. So mm-hmm. I would say is like, what if the first five minutes of the day were dedicated to you? Just mm-hmm. the first five. Mm-hmm. And that first five, could you be laying in bed, just laying there going, I'm so glad I woke up. I have another day to do what I'm here to do. I'm mm-hmm. amazing. Like it could just be a five minutes of affirmations. It doesn't actually mm-hmm. have to be movement yet. It could just be for you. What's going to happen is when you are a happy person, you give yourself that dopamine, those five minutes, you are actually going to realize that time expands because you have more time and energy for the things you already do that day. And every, if uh, what happens is the brain will start to seek out opportunities for you to feel good because like you'll start to notice that taking care of yourself feels good. And you're like, oh, look, at there's five minutes here. Oh, I have 10 minutes here. Oh, actually, I don't need an hour to sit at my desk and eat. I can take the first 15 minutes and walk around the block. And then I could take 15 minutes to eat my lunch and I could take the rest of my lunch to sit and read self-development. I could Mm -hmm. listen to a podcast that makes me feel good. That's self-care too, guys. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really about like taking care of what you have. Like, what can you do? Is it like, what can I do? What is possible? In my Mm -hmm. Pilates classes, we are constantly reminding people, if you can't do this exercise yet, what can you do? What can you do? And the more you're asking yourself, what what is possible? What can I do right now? You are training your brain to seek out opportunities to take care of yourself. You are going to find so many more. But if you focus mm-hmm. on what you can't do, I promise you, you'll you'll never find any time to do anything. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. She'll just let that negative self talk. It'll just be like, nope, you can't do it. Why try? So. Oh yeah. And yeah. then and then you'll be you'll be you won't even be exactly where you are a year from now. You'll be further behind because mm-hmm. the energy of the of the of the earth is going forward. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I think it's, it's not easy to get started. So I also just yeah. need to say like, turning on your car, a plane taking off into the air, all those things require more energy than keeping it running. Mm-hmm. So once a plane is in the air, it actually uses less gasoline than it takes to like take off. So the same goes for you. Getting started is hard. It's uncomfortable. It feels uncomfortable. You don't feel like, a, a, like you're the best at it. Allow yourself to be a beginner because I bet you if you have kids, you'd let them be a beginner. You know, we mm-hmm. let little kids learn how to walk and we don't go, oh, you fell. You're terrible. You should never walk because you're not good at it. <laughs> we don't do that. We like cheer them right. on every time they walk. Yeah, They draw terrible things on pieces of the paper and we're like, don't go, not inside the lines. You suck. Not an artist. No, we're like, look, wow. Thank you for this art piece. Treat yourself mm-hmm. like a toddler. Yeah. When it comes to doing things new, I bet you'll find more time and you'll create habits that will actually stick that you want to do. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Thank you. Uh, okay. So in um, why should women, and you mentioned, you, you briefly mentioned perfection earlier. Mm-hmm. Why should we be ditching perfection? And also, I love this, you call it over overachieverism. So why, why do we need to get rid of those things in our life? Yeah. So I'm a recovering perfectionist and overachiever. And every single one of us needs to get rid of it because the people who told you needed to do that are just trying to keep you so busy at being perfect that you can't actually do anything. And then they can do whatever they want. And I do think that perfectionism is holding um, so many women back because if you are not putting out your amazingness in the world, you're not getting feedback. And then if you wait until the thing is perfect, either it never gets done, which means it never gets out there and changes anyone's lives. Mm -hmm. Or by the time it gets out there, you haven't had feedback along the way and it doesn't land and then you feel like a failure. So Mm -hmm. perfectionism is really you just wanting to feel in control and you wanting to control how people hear things, feel things, experience things. But I promise you, That when you let go of that and you try in little ways to be imperfect and laugh at yourself for making mistakes, you are going to go further faster. You're going to have everything you wanted and you'll have more friends because no one wants to be friends with perfect. It's not fun. It's pretty boring. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. True. All the things, whatever, all the things Leslie said. (laughs) All right. uh, Well, Leslie, that that is a good note um, to transition into how... Can people listening or watching connect to you or how can they work with you? Yeah. So you, if you are wanting to um, try out some Pilates that actually works for you, you can go to opc.me slash glow up. So opc.me slash glow up. 
It's going to take you to our free stuff. It's going to take you to ways you can do flies. We love newbies. We love beginners. We love people who make mistakes. So you can go there. Um, and um, if you are like, mm, I'm not so sure yet, then you can just go to my Instagram account and you can do a little stalking, get a little comfortable. <laughs> I've got links to our YouTube videos there that are free as well. So that is how you can engage with us. But I do hope that you um, let us show you how Polaris can help you ditch that perfection. Let us show you how it can help you create habits that stick. And um, let us help you remember about what's possible, and what you can do. I would love to do that. Awesome. Thank you. Well, we will make sure to put these uh, links in the show notes as well. Um, and thank you so much for uh, creating something for this audience. Really appreciate that. Oh, it's my pleasure. If you guys are going to let me talk into your ears and inspire you, I have to also let you be able to take action because otherwise, what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to transition into three things with Leslie now. I'm going to ask you three questions. Helps the audience get to know you a little bit better. Um, the first question is a two-parter. Um, it is, how do you start and how do you end the day? So I start the day um, saying, "This is today is going to be amazing. I do start the day like that, put my feet on the floor, see today's going to be amazing. And I actually take a walk outside as soon as I can. Um, how I end the day is generally with a walk with my husband. Uh, we have three dogs, you guys. So we baby walks. The, mm -hmm. You know, if you're struggling to get a walk in, get a dog and uh, you'll be surprised how easy it is <laughs> yes. to get the time for walks. Um, so I actually start the end of the day with a walk, which I really like. Um, and then the other thing that I do each day is I start the day sharing with my husband Three things we're grateful for, three things that we're excited for, and three things we're manifesting. And we do that during the week, and it's a really special way to know what each other has got on their minds mm -hmm. um, and what we're hoping happens. Oh, I love that. Awesome. All right. The second question is, um, if you are a goal or an intention setter, um, what's one thing you've set for yourself this year? One of the things I set for myself this year is... Um, I am actually trying to be more intentional about hanging out with women in the town I live in. I moved here during the pandemic. And um, while I know a lot of people, I don't actually have like an intentional community. So mm -hmm. um, I reached out to some women that also work for themselves. And I said, do I just want to meet for coffee? And we're trying to do a monthly meetup. And that is an intention I have is to, like actually be, be in a community where nice. I live. Like it, like it. And the last question is, what's a book, a podcast, a show, or anything that you are loving or is inspiring you in this moment? Yeah. So um, I just had coffee with a girlfriend and I shout out this book out. It's my favorite book to recommend to people. It's by Gay Hendricks. It's called The Big Leap. And it is the greatest way to discover how you're holding yourself back and how to take action and also how to extend time. So it's called The Big Leap. By Gay Hendricks. It's been out for a while and I recommend it so much. I should just go buy a hundred books and just start giving them out to people. But like it's, you know, I'm his biggest fan. He doesn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. And before I let you go, first, I want to say thank you again um, for sharing your time and your knowledge with my audience today. And um, you can always come back here in the future. Oh, thank you. Um, and I would like for you to leave the audience with three things you would like for them to take away from our conversation today. Yes. So perfect is boring. <laughs> <laughs> Be kind to yourself and just get started. Start with what you have. Yes. Awesome. I love those. All very simple, easy things to do, but good, great reminders because I think we always need a reminder um, to just be gentle with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like, all right. Well, Leslie, thank you again. It was so great um, having you on today. Um, I wish you all the success and a very successful and joy-filled 2024. Oh, thank you. You too, Kyra. This is, a, this is amazing. Thanks for having me. <laughs> awesome. Well, stay tuned, everyone. I'll be right back.